Thank you very much, Program Director, and good afternoon, ladies. I was one to also greet males that are here. I'll just do a favor because this is not a gents event. It's our event, ne? But just to respect them because I also love men in a way. Especially those that respect women and support us. But thank you very much. Good afternoon. Let me acknowledge and honor the presence of all prestigious, of all of you in this prestigious occasion. As public service colleagues, I know that I've got those that are coming from departments, the business leaders, thought leaders, heads of organizations, entrepreneurs, civil society, and everybody important in this occasion. I'm avoiding to say all protocols observed. <laughs> I once attended a, a conference in Kenya and I was asked to speak on the gender agenda, gender mainstreaming. And I tried to be smart, I said all protocols observed. And I was told that no, that's a South African phenomenon. Don't come with that in, in, in Kenya. So I'm avoiding, that's why I'm saying all important and, and important people. Let me start by extending my gratitude to Standard Bank and its partners for inviting us, the Gauteng Legislature, to participate in the 2019 Standard Bank Top Women Awards. But maybe I should also explain what is the Gauteng Legislature. People think that we are government. We might be because we are elected, because we are a political institution, but we are a parliament of the people of Gauteng, like the one in, 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 in in, in, in Cape Town. We are the parliament, we are not government. Government happens to be the departments and the premier in our case in Gauteng, but we also play an oversight role on the, on, the, on the government. We are supposed to ensure that the government delivers on their mandate. So for me, this is a meeting of, of the minds, not because the legislature banks with Standard Bank, anyway, we are our banker but because we are like-minded institutions with a common interest to empower women for the greater economic development of our country and of our province in particular. We know that excluding women in the mainstream economy of our country is detrim detrimental to our gross domestic productivity, mainly because we are effectively excluding the majority of our human capital from the economic endeavors of our nation. Earlier on, I was addressing a group of, not, not, let me not use the word group, it's not, it's not correct. We had a breakfast with all women that are employed by the legislature, but we also invited young women from the institutions of higher learning, those that were mentoring. And when I told them about my first day when I was deployed in local government, I was once a counselor myself, about 17 years of my life I spent there, 10 years of it, I was a ward councillor. And people don't understand that when we were in those institutions, we hardly have a bathroom for women. And remember, being a mayor in a small dorp of Nigel, you are chairing a meeting, you need to answer a call of nature while you are busy there. And I was the only woman councillor at the time. So it means, as an activist, as a gender activist, for them not to take decisions that are contrary to what you want to achieve. I had to stop the meeting. I could not delegate to a man who was a deputy mayor because it means discussions were going to go on and instead of approving a budget to build a clinic or to inst install water pipes, they will choose a road because they all have cars. C can you see that is a gender agenda already? You must think about the majority of women out there to say, if there's a decision that is taken, who is mostly going to benefit? If the majority are not women and young people, just don't do it, and people with disability. But if the majority of those that are going to benefit are women, because some, in the first instance, women happen to be the majority in our country, but all over the world. But they are key in terms of making sure that the household runs as managers, but they're also key in many other institutions. Like in a church, most of the people who are doing the fundraising are women. But the people who take decisions as to how the money is spent, it's men. 
who happens to be in the church council in the boards in the churches. So those things must come to an end, guys. We must take decisions. We aspire to be the post-2015 transformation agenda to leave no one behind in the socio-economic development of our country. These awards provide one of the most valuable platforms not only for us to bolster each other in our efforts to leave no one behind, but also to share best practices. There are many other women who are doing a lot of good work, but we need to give them platforms because I can learn from you, you can learn from me. We do our little bits, empowering each other. Let's share the notes because those notes can actually boost our, our in individual uh, uh, plans. Best practices such as these awards, which recognize, encourage, and reward women who serve as role models and inspiration to others who may be in the verge to give up trying. Women who are forced to be reckoned with because despite all barriers posed by patriarchal values and practices, they have beaten the odds and have shown that sisters are doing it for themselves. The Houghton legislature takes to the heart the saying that when you empower a woman, you empower a nation. Not as a fashion statement, but for its fundamental meaning. This is why the fifth term of the Houghton legislature, which ended shortly before the 8 May elections, we saw it fit to establish systems that would ensure that we strengthen our response to the call of the post-2015 transformation agenda that says, leave no one behind. We took note of documented challenges to the achievement of gender parity aspirations from reviews of instruments such as the Millennium Development Goals and the Beijing Declaration. The documented challenges include, amongst others, inadequate capacity to, trans to translate policy into practice, inadequate skills for gender analysis and gender responsi responsive budgeting, undefined systems to operationalize gender mainstreaming directives, insufficient allocation of human and material resources, gender blind policies and strategies, which really do not address unequal access to resources. Attitudes and practices that are a void of knowledge of the socio-economic, political, and historical dynamics of gender discrimination and inequality, which contributes to resistance to addressing issues of gender inequality. The Department for Women contends in its recent gender responsive, responsive planning and budgeting framework that about midway into democracy, South Africa began to experience a gender mainstreaming recession. Instead of going forward, went backwards. Both in, in, in the public sector, but also uh, in, the, in the private institutions. Therefore, as a nation, we recognize the need to revive and accelerate efforts to advance gender equality and non-discrimination for the greater good of our country. Our approach as the legislature is to refocus our interventions to address identified limitations in relation to the achievement of the desired transformation goals. Bearing in mind challenges that have hindered our progress, the Gauteng Legislature deliberately took a multi-pronged approach to implement sustainable interventions at both the strategic and operational levels for us to build a solid foundation to institutionalize these interventions. Noting that women are not homo a homogeneous group, in the fifth term of the Legislature, we adopted a comprehensive approach to mainstreaming gender and, and other cross-cutting issues which we call a transversal mainstreaming approach, where we focus on mainstreaming gender, race, disability, as well as the youth. As the legislature, we did not base our interventions on the assumptions that all will run smoothly. 
meng jwe tse ketse jwang a wang jwe tsa gore go bima but we only find out when we are there in fact one of my friends when she turned 50 last year she said why did you tell me that 50 years is difficult i said you did not ask me <laughs> we were cognizant of the fact that this will continue to be a rocky journey because addressing gender inequality in particular continues to be resisted due to unconstructive beliefs, values, and practices in relation to gender roles. We therefore started by establishing support structures at technical and advocacy points for the work ahead as we began the fifth term of the legislature in 2014. We established a function to provide transversal mainstreaming technical support, but also to ensure that interventions are research and evidence based. Whatever we do, it is based on the research. We then revived the multi-party women's caucus, which is constituted by women parliamentarians coming from all political parties that are at the legislature, which is, a, which is an advisory and influencing structure of the legislature in relation to mainstreaming of gender, race, disability, and youth. In acknowledging that gender equality interventions require efforts from both men and women, and similarly, transformation issues require efforts of all South Africans. That's the reason in the, in the instance I said, I love men. We therefore established the Gauteng Provincial Legislature Men's Forum, which like the multi-party women's caucus is multi-party, because we have realized that it is not only women that can fund can actually fight um, the GPV and femicide that is happening in our country. But we need to, be, to come together so that all those good men out there can work with us and say those that are doing wrong things don't actually represent them. And the idea was to really create platforms where the GPL community, regardless of gender, race, or political affiliation, could find common ground to address issues of inequality and discrimination on the grounds of demographic or different demographic characteristics, not on, on, on party politics. We also revived the Employment Equity Forum, which facilitates equity in recruitment practice of the legislature. The Gauteng legislature then commissioned research to assess the level of mainstreaming gender, race, disability, and youth in its constitutional mandates and administrative processes to establish a basis for improving our intervention strategies. The internal research culminated in different products, which includes a report that provides extensive recommendations on improvements required to effectively mainstream in all the mandates and operations of the legislature. Our mandate is to pass laws that are relevant to the people of Gauteng, to do oversight over the executive, holding the, the premier and the MECs accountable on the budgets that are allocated to them, on the plans that they said they will do for the people of Gauteng, but also on their action individually, but also as a collective. Our mainstreaming includes human resources, supply chain management, finance, policy development, and other governance and operational processes. Advocacy is ongoing on implementing the recommendations of the study. Governance documents such as the transversal mainstreaming policy and implementation plan, planning and reporting frameworks that incorporates performance measures, as well as publications on operating standards for mainstreaming gender, race, disability, and the youth, with the latter contributing to knowledge creation in the legislative sector. For gender mainstreaming capacity development across the board, three sets of GPL-specific training material were developed and I'm sure we can also share with those that don't have, but those was, that was in response to the findings of the internal research, and the materials are accustomed for members, management, as well as staff at the legislature. Material focus on awareness on transversal mainstreaming concepts and tools for mainstreaming in the, main, in the mandates and administrative processes of the legislature. We also came up with a training program that was launched in 2018-19 financial year, and is conducted annually. With a session scheduled per quarter, we also invite our municipal counterparts, especially our councillors 
and focal points from the Gauteng government departments as our key stakeholders in, in the implementation of government priorities. May I also indicate at this point that these materials and the research report and publications can be accessed in our website, which is www.gpl.gov.za. To enhance our internal training programs, we partnered with the Internal Training Center of the International Labor Organization, who provides a four-week course on gender-responsive budgeting, three weeks online, and one week face-to-face. -face. But I think what was also good is that our gender mainstreaming is no, is no longer a, one of those things that we can do, but it is embedded in our planning session. When we start planning, gender mainstreaming must find expression even at that particular high level where directors and strategic managers, presiding officers actually reside so that they're able to actually ensure that we cascade those down to lower levels. The legislature now boasts a cohort of beneficiaries to this training program, which includes activists from committees to the finance division, the public education unit, to the monitoring and evaluation unit, and committees, amongst others. Honorable members and staff who underwent this program are beginning to make a difference in the legislature, including planning for the sixth term of the legislature, which started on the 8th of May, uh, after the elections, which speaks the transversal mainstreaming and gender responsive, responsive budgeting language with budgeting templates revised accordingly, planning, reporting, and m &E templates revised accordingly, and public education material being revised as we speak, because what we need to take out to the public uh, must also uh, talk to those gender mainstreaming issues. Through this capacity development campaign, the legislature hopes to create and inculcate a culture of mainstreaming gender and human rights, as well as gender responsive, responsive budgeting within the GPL community, and to normalize mainstreaming as everyone's business. I recall it to reprimand some, some men who actually, when they see women, they say, these are the gender people. I am not gender, I have a name. So that is very much ill discipline and disrespect of us as women. We are not gender, we do have our names. Because gender is not about women only, but it's about all of us. And our interventions go beyond improving internal governance to support service delivery through our mandates of oversight, lawmaking, as well as public participation. The multi-party women's caucus receives requests from women in different communities of Gauteng to empower them with skills to start or run small businesses. One of the requests we responded to in 2018 was a request to train in, in business skills. We partnered with like-minded institutions in the private sector and NGOs. I know that one of the training or seminar was also conducted by Vets University as our partner, where we facilitated and trained 50 women who own small businesses. The training considered of skills development and mentorship components and was conducted through eight training sessions including components of basic of entrepreneurship, basic principles of costing, pricing, and budgeting, branding, sales, and marketing, supply chain excellency, business gap diagnostic, tendering, business strategy, and business leadership. This training took six months. Some of the women trained ten testify that from their improved branding and marketing strategies, they have moved from earning from pocket to mouth, to being able to pay their children's university fees and remained with a balance in their bank accounts. Another community outreach intervention of the Gauteng Legislature multi-party is the Vita Basadi Awards, which was initiated in 2015. GPL MPWC recognized different pockets of excellence within the communities of Gauteng where some women have taken it upon themselves to initiate community upliftment projects, often as a way out of poverty and unemployment. We therefore initiated this annual Vita Basadi Awards to recognize and encourage the self-empowerment spirit that exists within our own communities. We recognize 20 women through the Vita Basadi Awards, 10 winners and 10 runners-up, and our awards are sponsored by the business sector and hence want to say thank you very much to the business sector for coming on, on board. 
will be hosting our 2019 or 5th Vita Basadi Awards on the 29th of August 2019 at the Gauteng Legislature Precinct. I want to conclude as could take the whole day if I were to continue talking about the initiatives of the legislature, in particular the multi-party women's caucus. I know that one of the participants here said, can you share more? I said, unfortunately, I don't have enough time, but being a speaker, I can speak until 10 days, you know, <laughs> without stopping. Uh, so, but uh, feel free to actually interact with us. We can share a lot of information, but we also want to learn from you as well. Please do share with us. Suffice to mention that we are recognized on the fourth industrial revolution. We therefore, in the sixth term of the legislature, we have begun to form partnerships with both in national and international cyber practitioners, so to speak, to align our interventions, especially women's empowerment interventions to the cyber business environment. In conclusion, I want to indicate that in the last senior management recruitment drive mid-term in the fifth legislature, we deliberately employed equity measures to balance gender scales in the legislature. Subsequently, we currently have 58% women employees in general and 52% in the executive and director post, not only at the lower level uh, of, of the legislature. Of the 73 members that constitute the legislature, those elected members, 42% are female. Uh, but we still need to actually pursue and request our other political parties to ensure that they, they, they stick to the gender 50% gender parity of which at the moment they strongly don't believe in. Of the 18 chairpersons of committees, 49% are female. Currently, the presiding officers of the legislature, which is the top decision-making structure of the institution, we have 75% women representation. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the case of the Gauteng Provincial Legislature, and we are here to share our experiences and gather more strength and courage to soldier forward from yourselves, our like-minded partners. We want to say, Aluta Continua, uh, because Tata Mandela once said, Poverty is not an accident. Like slavery and apartheid, it is man-made and can be removed by the actions of the very same human beings. I wish to thank you and wish you all the best in everything that we do. Thank you.